And without further ado, I will bring up Julia Gauss from Scripps Network Interactive, um, also known as HGTV and the Food Network. So let's welcome Julia. Today about me. I've been with the, the company for quite a while and I've been in the role for uh, search marketing for you know, six or seven years. Um, today I'm going to talk about the beginnings of HGTV and HGTV.com and sort of how both the network and the websites have evolved over time, um, as well as kind of how we're expanding our reach to new uh, domains, as well as expanding. The content that we have on our own sites and some of the changes that we're making to to kind of fuel the Google monster as they change emphasis on different things that they think are important and help with your rankings. So this is the story of a cable network and its pet website. HGTV, the Home and Garden Television Network, was founded in 1994 in Knoxville, Tennessee of all places, which is where I live. Um, it had a full slate of how-to programming and it, that was launching a website to support that was really a natural extension of the brand. This is what it looked like in the beginning. Isn't that a nice homepage? It's come a long, long way since then. Uh, but this was in 1996. And in the, also back then, the, uh, the programming was based a lot on how-to. So this lady, is, her name's Carol Duvall. And she and her guests would show you how to make all sorts of little crafts and things, such as you know, stained glass pieces and, and different stuff like that. And it was perfect, you know, the website was a perfect extension of that brand because we would, they'd show you on TV how to make it, and then we would type it all out, pull a couple of screen grabs, put it online, and people would come on and download that and do it themselves. And that worked really well for a while and really helped our website grow and um, help support our ad, we have an ad supported website model. Um, but then, things began to change. As the network evolved over time, they kind of moved away from the how-to, and um, HGTV.com had to find kind of a new way to maintain our identity without getting stale. So these are all of our logos, some of our logos over time, so it has actually evolved. And if you've noticed, not that it really matters, we've kind of dropped home guard television. It's just HGTV now. Um, so the website still supports all, some of our great, you know, all of our great TV shows, um, you know, HGTV, Star, House Hunters, Dream Home, and all that, those things. Uh, so we have, you know, show pages and episode finders and videos and things for these shows, but they don't really give us a lot of meat for the website. And so the website can't. So we found that our website couldn't survive the show content alone. Um, our, cable, our network has moved away from sort of the how-to um, style programming to reality show style programming. So they want you to sit back and watch instead of stand up and do. But the website is still all about that. So how did we, how are we going to continue to grow our site and represent all the trends in Home and Garden category while still supporting it with, this, with the HGTV um, persona over you know, kind of carrying on that, that uh, persona. But, we decided to really focus on original content development, really separate from what was on TV. So our strategy. So the influences on our topical decisions, you know, we would look at our site activity, see what everybody who was already coming to the site wanted to consume. Um, we still pay attention to what they were doing on air as far as, you know, are they looking at kitchens or bathrooms or mud rooms or, you know, what are they concentrating on this week? Um, and then we keep up with the trends in the category, uh, looking, you know, using a lot of metrics online. Um, social chatter engagement has certainly become a really important part of what we, um, what we decide to uh, focus on. And yes, SEO keyword research, we do a lot of that. Um, some of the topics that we cover, if y'all aren't familiar with HGTV, um, you know, home design and inspiration, room remodels, kind of before and after shots. Uh, entertaining and holiday ideas, and then landscaping and gardening. And uh, we have a, a team of editors who produce content around these topics um, in, in a lot of different formats. So I was going to show you some. This is our new, this is our current homepage, a little bit different than the one back in 1996. But we also have um, 
um, photos, lots and lots of photos. Um, we have a blog or two that are really helping us target the trending topics. Um, we have, these are photo galleries, we have videos, and we just have regular articles. So we're using all of these different types of assets to provide content that's useful to our visitors. And to get you know, natural search traffic on the website, right? So hgtv.com has grown to become about, all about ideas and inspiration. So the purpose is to inspire people to love their homes and offer them ideas to make it beautiful. Moved away a little bit from the how-to with a greater focus on decorating and design than um, remodeling and gardening and sort of getting your hands dirty. So we realized that there were still large segments of the category that, weren't, that we weren't serving with the ideas and inspiration, so there might be room for new, web, new websites around that. Um, because audience growth drives ad revenue. So we've launched HGTVRemodels.com, that was back in 2011, and HGTVGardens.com, which launches the full site this year. And the purpose of that was to grow our audience um, beyond you know, what we were, who we were focusing on. So you can, uh, with these focused websites for remodeling and gardening, you really can go after new, um, new advertisers that might not be interested in your overall beautiful design type thing. Um, so, so I want to talk a little bit about how we have built the content for these websites. So this is uh, a couple of screen grabs from the sites. Um, it was kind of easy to figure out the top tier topics on these sites. So like kitchen and bathrooms are really hot and have been for years on HGTV.com. So it made sense that that was sort of some of the things that we focused on for HGTV remodels. And then people were always looking for information about specific plants on HGTV.com as well. So for the HGTV Gardens website, you know, we built a lot of the content, of the initial content around Plant Finder. So, so that was, you know, it's kind of easy to, to identify those top line topics, but you can't, you have to build out a full website, right, to ever get traffic to it. So now what do we do? So we just had to figure out how to take an umbrella topic and expand it to make a full site and um, that would, would satisfy our audience and also our ad salespeople, which I don't know if anybody else is an ad supported uh, website, but sometimes they're a little hard to please. So, so we decided that, well, we decided as an SEO department that we were going to help. And um, so we started a lot of this research um, done by our department. So we used a lot of different uh, tools, and I'm sure you're familiar with all of these. Uh, Google AdWords, Hitwise, Google Trends and Insights, has been kind of, that's been really fun to use, uh, yeah, as well as Yahoo Spiking Content. You know, site search, we actually you know, mine our own websites to see what people were trying to find. And then Bright Edge has been very helpful um, with us helping us look at some of our competitors. So we had to identify the sites that you know, most important topics um, and related to the content uh, and the objectives. And like I said, these are some of the things that we use. Um, I've kind of enjoyed the Google Suggest as a way to find some really long tail stuff. It's kind of interesting. When you type, they showed an earlier um, how to, somebody typed in how to. You get some really interesting things when you're, uh, <laughs> when you're researching how to. I'm like, how do you not know how to do that? You know, but anyway, we're not, we're not putting that on the website. But, um, so, so this is kind of an example of how we built out some of these categories, so, or these topics. So um, kitchen remodel, you know, how broad can you possibly get from that? So what we did is we would identify kind of your top, your top um, or second tier, we call them tier two uh, categories. So kitchen countertops, kitchen islands, pantries, and then you know. So what do we do from that? So what are what are people specifically looking for around kitchen countertops? So choosing kitchen countertops, how to install kitchen countertops, uh, types of granite kitchen countertops, you know, what style stone versus granite. You know, so really giving people a deep, deep information about these specific specific topics. So this is basically how we've built out both HGTV gardens as well as HGTV remodels and just kind of looking at the mid-tier and long-tail keywords uh, to build out the site. So we can also look for, now this, this expands to kind of what we're doing on HGTV right now as well, um, looking for opportunities for content development. So there are topics with minimal existing coverage but traffic potential. So on HGTV, we have identified some areas where we really just haven't gone deep. 
So, um, but, but they might be areas that are gaining in popularity in the category. So we would kind of apply that same, that same uh, deep dive to those categories and then add, come back in and add content around them. So also um, on, on, to on, um, on topic content gaps. So it's like, what did I mean by that? Um, so the, there are some topics that um, that we just or some that we just didn't, which we just don't have at all. So it's not that we don't have much content. We just skipped it for whatever reason. Pantry is probably a pretty good example. That's something that people have really been talking about lately. If you ever watch House Hunters, people are always looking for the pantry. Where's the pantry? Well, no one was ever talking about pantries five years ago. Now it's a hot thing. So, um, so we went on HGTV. We have to start building a collection of pictures of pantries. I mean, excitement, right? Um, and then we also really used uh, some competitive, uh, competitive analysis, um, a lot of it provided by our host, Bright Edge, um, to expose what some of our competitors are doing in, on their sites that we might not be, and, and for which they're getting traffic, that we just hadn't really expanded in that area. So that's been a very, very interesting um, way to, to look at new opportunities for the sites. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about Google's ever-changing game and their ever-changing rules and what we're trying to do to satisfy the things that they are, are deeming important these days. And it's not that these are completely different, they just have a little bit more of a level of, uh, of importance put to them. So, you know, from what I understand, Google's really putting a lot of emphasis on click-through rate from their, web, from their search results. So, you know, really that makes those SEO descriptions that have been, you know, poo -pooed for ages because they're not used in rankings, but it makes them even more important now because you're really writing an ad for your site. And it really makes a difference. And we've, we recently did a study about, um, you know, what, how people were getting to our sites and we realized that for, for our sites, you know, they, if they didn't see HGTV, they might skip over our listing. And then when we pointed out, they're like, oh, we didn't see HGTV, we know that was HGTV. So it just shows you how making sure you're, in, you, you're emphasizing the right things in your SEO description. Because it's really, you're really writing an ad, like I said, for your site. Um, another thing is uh, that all of these changes that, they, that Google has recently made in how, uh, how, you, how your results are uh, presented in search, uh, has, is, it, you know, it's important to really, if, where you can uh, adapt to that. Um, this is a result from food.com, which is another one of our websites. And um, we've employed the schema.org rich snippets markup on that site. We're using a lot of it on all of our sites, but these are just the most odd. For recipes, it's really kind of the most obvious. Um, so it really encourages click through. In fact, um, in the food cat on our food category sites, once we added these rich snippets to it, we s the click through on our recipe pages, not overall as yet, but just on the recipe pages, grew by 40% in the months following the addition to this. I mean, it, and it really makes sense to me. I mean, you see the picture and you see the rate ratings, and it's really going to draw your attention. So I think it's important to you know where you can take advantage of this to do so. Um, another change is Google authorship. You know, we've tried to implement this wherever we can on our websites. And again, it just really, right now, it's, um, I don't know that authorship authority is, author authority is being used as a ranking factor, but it's going to be. So the more, that's a, more, the, the more this is used, the more important that's going to become. And it also makes it stay, stay out, it gives, your, it gives more exposure to your editors and make, makes them more of an authority or your authors. So there's more exposure to them and it helps uh, build up their authority. And it also really makes those results pop in the search, on the search results page because they're in, so food is great, but when you're looking for, for a sofa, <laughs> so, you know, how to choose a sofa, you're probably not gonna get an image on, against every search result. But so the one that has an image, even if it's if a, if a cute girl who wrote the blog post, it's gonna really stand out over the ones that have no picture at all. So some other ways that we've been working on to improve our content, the SEO for our content, so the, the, the success. Uh, we're trying to maximize, the, ma maximize the engagement in areas that are already getting SEO traffic. 
So in our case, that means more page views and videos per visit. So what we want to do is avoid someone coming onto our site and then jumping right back out to Google because you know, a lot of, a lot of um, indications are that Google's measuring that. They're paying attention to whether people are staying, you know, whether your site's sticky enough to hold their attention. So you know, we're trying to make our sites as engaging as possible. So, so we're looking at areas that are already getting SEO traffic and making sure that we have put our best content. One of the things that we've started doing that I don't have in the slides is um, start working with our paid search department because they split us up. And um, looking at their reporting to see, because they're pushing things out through you know, Outbrain and all of these really you know, very social types of paid media. And we're looking at what people are clicking on from them and then how many pages are they consuming once they get there. So a lot of, you know, some of their content might be getting four or five page views, but a lot of them are getting like 40, which is crazy, I know, but it is. So we're trying to make sure that we have that content in front of people when they come in from SEO where it's relevant. We have photo galleries on our website. Uh, and this is one of the ways that we increase engagement because people will click through. Um, and we make sure that we are, um, we make sure that we're linking closely between related content um, with photo galleries as much as we can um, just to get to build more engagement. Uh, we've built a strong taxonomy that helps us relate to relate that content more automatically so we don't actually have to do it hands-on. And that's been very helpful. And then I uh, will build you know, clear pathways. Like, oh, this is really what I'm talking about, building clear pathways from natural search landing pages to the really sticky content. And in our case, that's dropping visitors to a photo gallery, and we call that virtual crack because they can't seem to quit. I mean, really, honestly, we have keywords that can drive, or sections of our site that can drive 40, 45 page views a visit, and it's, it's just crazy. <clears throat> Okay, so there's a content fresh test going on with Google. Um, Google loves that new car smell. That's why I have a Christmas tree here. So one of the things you have to remember is to have a top ranking site right now, you've got to, be, you've got to add new content all the time. I mean, it's got to look fresh. If it doesn't look fresh, if it looks stale, then in a lot of categories you're not going to rank. That's why, I mean, in my opinion, that is why blogs do so well because they're, they're so fresh and they're on the money. They also have dates, but you know, I don't know whether you really want to use dates or not, that just depends on your content. But, um, so the addition of the new material should also update beyond just that page. So there, there's a web, there are some websites out there that you know, they, they launch like tons of content and that's really helpful and it's helped their rankings a lot. But what has also helped is that when each piece of content that they launch is, is linked to 90 different pages, and all those 90 different pages show that, show that new piece of content close to the top of the page, so all those 90 pages look refreshed too. So, it's a, so you know, adding one piece of content can actually make more than one page look new on the site, or look like it's been updated. So that's been something that we're working on really hard um, to increase the amount of new content each day that we put up. So Google can reward freshness with multiple high listings and the, the site to which I was referring has benefited from that greatly. Um, oh, and we, like I mentioned, the, the blogs, blogs seem to be doing really well in, in searching. You know, a lot of that's because it's you know, lots of words on the page, but again, I think a lot of that is because you can really cover your trending topics easily, you can move fast, quickly to market, and in our case, you, we can kind of go out of the box, outside the box blog. You know, we had a blog about dill pickles the other day. What does that have to do with HGTV, right? So, um, and it went straight to the top for the keyword that they were targeting, at least for a few days. I think about that is it doesn't always stick, but what if something's a trending topic, that's what you want in front of them. You want it in front of the people as that topic's trending, so. Um, <clears throat> so, our um, overall results uh, we, our websites make money, more money by serving ad impressions to a large and diverse audience. Um, much of the new audience, you know, can, new audiences, at least for us, are, are, are easily reached with search engines and natural search results. Um, you know, that, that targets an audience that might, act, might not actually be fans of HGTV. Um, and then Google's rules. Uh, they keep they keep they keep changing the rules, but it all boils down to content is king. It's always been king. It will always be king. 
Um, so some of the rules followed, just to summarize, in content creation in 2013, constantly add high quality content to your domain. Increase your engagement, both in click-throughs from search results, and also once the visitor gets to your site, so make your site as sticky as possible. And then take advantage of those tools that Google's offering, um, the markup suggestions. You know, pay really close attention to what they come out with because they do give us some clues here and there about what they deem important. And that's it.